Hey everyone, switch the camera around. All right, I'm gonna get my chair out and everything here while people join in and uh, we can talk about this thing that I'm doing right over here. All right, let's sit down. Hey everybody. Hey everyone who's joining. Oh, good morning, Sync Media. Thank you for joining. Sorry about the shakiness. Anders, hello, welcome. You guys can see I've got a remote gearbox behind me. Uh, I'm getting a little frustrated with this thing right now. Um, I'm gonna go into why here in just a minute. Been really wanting to get this gearbox done so that I can finish the engine that's over here because I am uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to have that done, um, but I haven't been able to because uh, I keep forgetting parts. You know that's a pretty common thing with minis. You know always forgetting parts, forgetting what you're doing. Um, but also I keep uh, I keep making some mistakes. So I just want you guys to see that no matter. How comfortable you are with minis and stuff and with all this equipment that you got to work on still make mistakes um, it's it, it happens um, if you guys haven't seen before uh, on the last episode I got done with uh, assembling some of the main shaft I think um, actually I don't remember what I got done I got some stuff done but uh, Today, while I was filming, I accidentally damaged my double roller bearing, which is very important. Holds the main shaft in right down here on this side of the gearbox. And uh, I was uh, using my hammer punch and I hit one of the plastic races in here. You can see right there, damaged that plastic race. Brand spanking new double roller bearing, completely destroyed. Super happy about that, as you can imagine, because these are not cheap, um, especially if you get the good ones that I usually get because, you know, I want my gearbox to last. But you can see now, whole thing comes apart because that plastic thing is just totally spent. So here's that brand new race, never to be used. Balls all over my desk here. Um, super, super frustrating. Let's see here. Dave Jag, nice to meet you as well. I had, I was really excited to meet you and the rest of the guys at the at the event there. Um, Drizzit, uh, learning loads from your videos on the engine and gearbox have only, goodness gracious, this thing is, my phone's being kind of funny. Um, I've only tackled body work and brakes. Well, hopefully this stuff is helping out. Um, it's fun to do. This is my favorite thing to do, despite me complaining there just for a little bit. Gearboxes are just the best. Um, especially these mini ones are really, really great to learn on, uh, if you haven't had a chance to uh, work on a gearbox before. And to give you an idea, I didn't know, know anything about gearboxes before I started working on minis and then, but that was like, I guess, eight years ago now. So, um, but yeah, since I have the live stream going, you guys have any questions? You guys want to do a little Q and A, uh, you know, something wor not working on your car, you want some help with, happy to help out while I uh, just kind of clean this up because uh, it's a bit of a mess. Let's see if I can get this camera a little bit better. Do do. Mm -hmm. yeah, something like that. As you can see up here, Bad Wolf 2.0. I got to keep one of those. That was on Alex Toon's car at IMM. I am probably going to be built, making that video at some point here in the near future. But um, when I drove his car, his car is a blue mini. And uh, of course, it had to be Bad Wolf 2.0. It was SPI, so a little bit newer. Kind of made sense. Um, but now, got a cool souvenir. He's got a matching one at his garage at home, which is pretty cool too. There we go. All right. No questions. None whatsoever. I'm having trouble believing that. Nobody has any problems with their minis right now. Nothing. Dang. 
That's crazy, y'all. Well, I can tell you, so you guys probably remember, I have, uh, I got in a small accident in my Mini, someone drove me off of the road. Um, the company, which I'm still gonna keep from saying their name, um, because I'm still holding out hope that they're gonna, you know, do the right thing. They haven't decided to yet, um, and uh, he keeps pushing me off next week, next week, so we'll see. Um, I really don't want to bring it to small claims court, but um, it looks like the steering rack is also damaged, which is not great. Um, I really don't want to replace the steering rack on the Mini, but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to have to. Um, so I'm going to be doing a video on that. Uh, I, that one has been a, definitely a lot of requests for that one over the years, um, but you know you don't want to replace it if it's not broken. Let's see what the chat says. Uh, Drizzt says, turns out mine has undersills. That's my first job after the strip down. Yep. Uh, Shan Wayne Stevens says, do I change my 998 for a 1275? Well, I'll say this. 1275, um, I think that you have a lot more uh, possibilities with a 1275. If you have access and can find a 1275, I would probably change it if it's an option for you. Um, but the 998 can be pretty, uh, pretty fun. Um, there's a lot of different stuff you can do to that to pull out some extra power. Uh, you can add a 1275 head um, with a little bit of modification of the block and it gets it pretty nice. I mean, it's a really nicely powered car. I mean, it's not a race car or anything, um, but it will, you know, you're gonna get some power. Um, 998s are good for things like uh, turbos and superchargers but that would require a lot of bottom end work. So uh, anything below the, the block. So you'd have to probably change out the pistons, um, make sure that the crank's in really good shape. Uh, but you know, if you change out the pistons and build it right, you can have a pretty nicely powered 998 um, with a turbo or a supercharger. That's actually something I wanna do over, um, I don't know, in the next, the next year or two. Uh, I have some stuff planned, but I'm not gonna share it just yet. Dave Jag says, Sunday afternoon in the UK, everybody is having a nap after their large Sunday roast. Uh, Sunday roast, is that like a specific kind of like food, you know, that you've, uh, you've cooked or something, or is it just like a general term? Man, I want this thing to be done. All right, we're gonna set this off again. wood blocks. Roast beef and Yorkshire puddings. Tom Mason tells me a lot about Yorkshire pudding. Oh, sorry if that was loud. So pick up all my uh, double roller balls here. Brand spanking new. Broken. There's the old race or the old uh, carrier. Race number. That's the inner race. Outer race. Other carrier. Got a Drew's page says greeting from Brighton. Hello, thanks for joining the stream. Gonna throw that away and that away. Now, one thing, when you're working on your gearbox, I know that uh, that this is kind of a small detail while we're doing a live stream, but this retaining ring. So this is your double roller bearing. Normally, there's stuff inside. This retaining ring right here um, is something that you want to keep. You can reuse it when you're rebuilding a gearbox. So something worth mentioning because uh, I wanted to keep mine before, but it broke. Oh man, what does everybody have going on this weekend? I know that it's Sunday, so it's basically, well, over. But uh, um, Nigel says, great work from Trinidad. Where is Trinidad, Nigel? I'm not familiar. Uh, I've heard the name before, but I don't actually know what country, is that the country or is that the city? Give me a geography lesson real quick. All right, roller balls everywhere. Uh, 
Drew's page says, just got back from a 500 mile road trip in the Rennie Mini, so resting today. I imagine that took a lot out of you. Um, I know that's, uh, I guess 500 miles for me is about down to maybe like Atlanta, Georgia, um, from Charlotte. And uh, I've done that before. I, what is it, like five hours or so? It's, uh, it's exhausting. Um, you know, a Mini takes a lot out of you while you're driving it. What was the occasion? Nigel says, Trinidad is six miles east of Venezuela. Oh, okay, so very cool, very cool. Do you have a lot of minis there? Oh, man. So you can see here, that's the main shaft, all assembled and everything. The only thing missing is the uh, final motion thingy, forget the name, <clears throat> final motion gear. Um, need to pull this bearing back off. Uh, hopefully I can get that off without damaging it, otherwise I'm going to have to get two new bearings. Um, but that's what your gear set looks like when it's all together. Pretty cool stuff, yeah? Nigel says, the Caribbean. Ah, nice. Drew's page says, just running uh, in trip, just a running in trip for the new engine, spent an, a few days in Devon. Nice. I feel like we might have driven through Devon when we were uh, uh, coming to IMM. Maybe not. Maybe I'm getting mixed up. Does that make sense for, is Devon nearby uh, Bristol? up. Adam Campion, thanks for joining. Drew's page says, not far, Devon is southwest of Bristol. Okay. Southwest. So we might have gone through it, or maybe I just saw some signs for it, because we were coming from North Wales all the way down through Wales, and then uh, across at, I forget the name of the city. Right. That's looking a little cleaner. Adam says, no, I didn't. Well, thank you, Adam. I couldn't remember. I just kind of rode along and, and uh, just enjoyed the scenery the whole ride. So uh, I, I just, I only knew what was right in front of me. stuff do you guys want to see on the channel next? I have a, I have a few bigger projects planned, um, but I, uh, I have some little stuff too that needs to be done. Do you guys want to see things like weather seals on the mini or uh, trim pieces, things like that? Um, I'd love to show you guys the thing that I installed here. Let me finish cleaning up here. Um, and I will show you guys a really cool little thing I installed. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have already seen this. But let's take a walk outside. More mini adventures with your wife. Well, uh, that is definitely something that I like to do. Oh, sorry about the spinning and everything. So out on the car here. Now, you guys may remember my dash cam video. Did that a few, <clears throat> a few weeks ago. So, dash cam lives up here. Pretty cool stuff. And I initially installed it with a voltage meter so that it would automatically cut off if the battery started to get too low. But wire runs all the way over here. Unfortunately, that little cheap voltage meter thing that I got from Amazon, um, I won't name the country where, that it came from, but it, it, uh, it rhymes with um, Gina. And this, it stayed on. The end of the story is that it drained my battery constantly. So I installed something 
we've got these little holes here because my seat belt used to be up here. Um, we drilled holes for the three point seat belt when we first got the car, got the roll cage and I moved it down here cause it's a little bit more comfortable. I installed this button. It's a capacitive button. So it doesn't click or anything. You just give it a tap and then you can see dash cam comes on just like that. Got a little green light. So you guys know, sorry for the shaky camera. Um, and there we have dash cam protection. And then when I get out of the car, come back over here, hit it again, dash cam turns off, no more battery draining. Now on this side, got another one that I just have, it doesn't do anything right now, but I'm thinking I might run this all the way along here down to a relay somewhere and I'm wondering if I do a little battery cutoff with it. So it's like an extra layer of security so people can't steal my car. Thought that might be a kind of a cool idea. What do you guys think? Do, 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 do. Put you back on the tripod so it's not so shaky. Because I have shaky hands. Yeah, so what do you guys think about that? everybody's so quiet today. I guess, uh, I guess Dave Dagg is right. I guess everybody's just done with, uh, their Saturday partying. Let's see here. You could put it up to the wire with the electric fuel pump. Oh, that's a really good idea. So have sort of a relay switch in the electric fuel pump line. So instead of running it with the battery cable, which is really thick gauge, run it to intercept that fuel pump wire with a relay and then the relay gets triggered and turns that on and off or allows the key to turn it on and off. That's a good idea. I like that because then uh, in, in the event that, that I might accidentally touch it while I'm driving, it wouldn't, it wouldn't immediately cut the car off. I would have a little bit of time to coast because my head's kind of close to that button. I do have a feeling that I might hit it accidentally. All right, so while we are here, I'm gonna pull this little bearing off. Um, hopefully it comes off pretty easily. I just put it on, so um, might just be able to do it. No, no, I don't know what I was thinking. Can't do that by hand. After I get this off, I wanna show you guys, I got a bunch of really cool stickers while I was overseas um, and uh, from a, quite a few mini guys. There we go. Come on, little buddy. Almost. Yay, it came off without any damage. A little roller bearing, so I'm still gonna be able to use this. Good news. Don't have to buy two new ones. That would make me mad. All right, what do we have here? Ugh. The touch stuff is not working on my phone right now. Drew's page says a lot of people used to put the fuel pump, oh, come on, put the fuel pump in the oil pressure line so the pump would only run if you had oil pressure. Huh, that's an interesting idea. Kind of ends up being though, if your pressure switch ever breaks, you could end up with a situation where it cuts off on un, uh, surprisingly. Uh, I guess that's, that could be the same could be said for a button next to your head. If you press that, of course, the car is going to turn off unexpectedly too. Um, hmm. Interesting. Now, one other thing that I've been thinking about a lot lately is doing a fuel injected setup on some some engine. Um, obviously, I'd need to find another 1275 or 998, um, but I'd really like to do a fuel fuel injected setup. Hey, mom, Colleen, thank you for joining. 
Love ya. Drew's page, indeed, but it does stop the pump pumping fuel in the event of a crash. Ooh, that's a good point, too. Whoops, sorry. Sorry if this is loud, everybody. Just putting tool away. That's actually a really good point. I'd want that pump to cut off in the event that the car flipped or something like that. That's a really smart thing to think about. Man, I need a garage. I need some space. All right, so hopefully you guys can read these. Whoops, that's the wrong one. Up here on the left, got a bunch of new stickers. Got Juiced Mini, that's the hydraulic mini. If you haven't seen that on Instagram, check him out. Um, really cool stuff. Like it's a literal hydraulically, uh, a hydraulic suspension mini um, took swept over the internet for a little while. Um, Adam Campion says your shop is bigger than my garage. Uh, I don't know. I've seen some videos of your garage. I don't think it's quite that big. Um, got this from uh, why can I not remember his name right now? I feel really bad. Um, one of my viewers in Guatemala gave me this. It was really cool to actually meet him in person because he's been commenting on all of my videos. Really cool guy. Um, Mini 60, IMM, One Love, One Mini. This is going to be, this is our local group, Classic Minis United. Um, and we are going to be going to, uh, uh, let's see here, Withville, Virginia here pretty soon. That's going to be pretty cool. Got two other stickers from uh, guys in Japan. We just happened to pop in William Murphitt. If you haven't seen his channel, it's really good stuff. Um, we were walking around the IMM and ran into some people didn't speak English from what we could tell. And we popped into one of their selfies. We photobombed them. And then they just gave us these stickers. I don't think they even knew that we were YouTubers or anything, but it was pretty cool. All right. So Adam, have you done your, your head gasket yet? Is that part done or do you just uh, just show the pictures and then it's, it's something that you gotta do in the future? Still on, cleaning it up for reassembly. Awesome. It didn't look too bad. It was just kind of a little bit unhappy looking. Um, it didn't look like it had a terrible, terrible uh, um, blowout or anything, which is good. I feel like this 998 is never going to be done for you guys. Really ready to have it finished so it can go in somebody's car and be happy. Adam says it only misfires when it's cold. Huh. So for those of you, if anyone on this live stream right now knows a good bit about needles, um, I uh, have the HS6 on my car right now. And uh, when it's idling, when I'm down at low RPMs, it's really, really rich. Um, under load, it's almost perfect. But then if you punch it, it gets pretty lean pretty quickly and ultimately kind of works itself out. But under high RPM loads, it gets, it gets pretty lean. Um, if we lean it out anymore, or we richen it up anymore, it won't run at idle. If we lean it out anymore, it's too lean up at the high end. Does anyone have any recommendations for good needles for, um, to address that? If not, no worries. Just something I thought I might pop in and ask. Raymond says, hello, does anybody know why my 95 SPI Mini turns off while driving? Um, so Raymond, there's some things you can check with the SPI. Uh, temperature wise, is it running okay with the temp? Um, if the temperature sensor doesn't uh, is giving a false reading, it could be sending a signal to lean out the engine. And if that's the case, then it could cut itself off while you're driving. Um, that's a pretty common issue on SPIs for those temperature senders to, uh, to go bad. That is the sensor that is on the manifold. 
Um, also, you can check to see fuel pump is working all right. Um, is there any more information you can give me about when it's actually cutting out? Is it under load? Is it when you're just kind of sitting in traffic? Uh, well, you know, what, what, uh, what other symptoms do you have? No other symptoms? Or are you just typing them out right now? While I wait to hear back, I do want to say, um, we recently, put my watch back on, we recently released a new keychains, uh, made by the same guy who does the fuel bibs that I have on the merch store. Um, and uh, they are handmade, hand stitched, they're really, really nice, and I'm doing free shipping on those for um, at least until the end of the month, maybe even a longer, and that's free shipping anywhere in the world. So if you are interested in getting a keychain for your mini, there are links in the description if, you, uh, if you'd like to pick one up. Drew's page. Why is this not? So Raymond says it does it under load. Other than that, it runs fine. So I check to make sure that the temp sensor is working, like I said a minute ago. Um, hmm. Trying to think what else it could be. You could try checking the fuel pump just to make sure that it's pumping good fuel. Um, if you're going under load and it just can't get enough fuel into the, into the system, it could be a problem. Um, hmm. SPIs can be a little finicky. Yeah. Maybe somebody who's on the chat knows a little bit more about SPIs would like to share some feedback. I don't have a ton of experience with them, so um, most of my recommendations are uh, just limited in nature. Drew's page says check the fuel filter. That's a good one. Um, if the fuel pump is not bad and the fuel filter is gunked up, it might not be getting enough fuel under load. Um, and that's a pretty easy fix. Filter. Drew, it says, was always chasing electrical problems on the SPI. Um, that sounds about right. <laughs> um, there's a lot more electrical stuff that can go bad, um, just with fuel injection in general, so not surprising. Um, yeah. Hmm. All right. Trying to think if there's anything else exciting going on over here, but I mean, the main thing that we're working on is this gearbox. And of course, not quite done. If you haven't been in here since the beginning, um, we had a bit of a mishap. The double roller bearing that is uh, used to hold the main shaft to support, to support this end of the main shaft. Um, I had a little accident with the uh, punch and I punched down into the uh, double roller balls broke one of the plastic retainers, double roller bearing is completely kaput at that point, definitely cannot use it in the gearbox. So had to disassemble everything basically from where it was. And I'm gonna have to reassemble it after ordering a new double roller bearing. It's kind of an expensive mistake too. They're like 60 bucks because it, I mean, there's cheap ones that you can get, but you know, you don't wanna skimp on something like that. It's carrying pretty much, well, it is carrying all the power and weight of the engine in it. So. Um, definitely don't want to skimp on that. Anybody else got some questions they want to ask? Let me put this in this direction here. Clean this up just a little bit more. One of the biggest things 
Drew's page says, what needle do you currently run? So I think that the link that, uh, it, that you put in there might not have shown up. Oh, here we go. Live chat. I think I was only doing some of the chat, so I might have been missing some stuff. Sorry in advance, everyone. So right now I have a BBW and the new HS6 carburetors. Um, obviously the HS6 was never on the Mini in the first place, but it is the same size as an HIF44. Um, and it has that little uh, spring-loaded needle. Um, so it uses the same needles as the HIF44. And I have a BBW on there. Um, if that helps at all. I know that there is a really great resource called Minty, Minty Lamb.su carb something something. I don't remember the link, the URL exactly, but it has a really cool comparison chart for, uh, for needles. Um, and I used that before, but there's so many needles on there. I almost was hoping that somebody had some recommendations of a good needle profile um, to start with so I could start comparing it to what I have in there already. Um, and you can only compare three needles at a time. Uh, I was thinking about rebuilding the, uh, the, the comparison chart because I'm a web developer. I was thinking about rebuilding that chart so I could compare more than three needles. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a lot of work. I don't know if I want to do that yet or not. Da, da, da. Drew's page says, try searching for WinSU software might give you an idea. Oh, that's a good one. I'll check that out. I've heard the name of that software, but I haven't used it before. Um, I'm curious. I wonder if it allows me to compare a few more. Now that is looking better. Nice and clean. Nice and clean. Ooh. Adrian says, hi Cole, how did you like uh, IMM in Bristol? Will you be coming to IMM in Germany next year? Um, so uh, I don't, I, well, first off, IMM in Bristol was incredible. Um, I just had an incredible time. Um, even though the weather was kind of crummy, uh, it didn't really matter because I've never actually seen that many minis in one place. Um, and then meeting everybody, running into people who watch the channel was really cool. Um, I had, honestly, I had no idea that so many people watched the channel and everyone who met me was super nice. I just, it was super humbling, um, to know that I helped a lot of people. So that was, that made me feel really good. Um, regarding Germany, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm leaning towards probably no. Uh, so this year obviously went to IMM, um, and my dad and I went together. Uh, just the two of us, but that also meant that my wife did not get to go international, uh, did not get to go on an international trip, so I'd like to bring her um, next year somewhere that she really wants to go, and uh, uh, spending a week or a long weekend only on minis is a lot for someone who isn't like as into minis as I am or someone else, so uh, I'm thinking that we'll probably go somewhere else. We're thinking maybe Iceland again, um, and maybe doing a camping trip around the ring of Iceland, um, the whole island, and then we might stop over in Norway afterwards, which would be pretty cool. I have a good, my best friend in the entire world is living in Norway, or gonna be living in Norway by then, um, and uh, I want to go check up and, and see him, because he's, uh, he's the guy that I went down to South Africa to visit, obviously not in South Africa, he'll be in Norway soon, but, um, but yeah, I want to visit him, and uh, any excuse to go back to Europe and visit a new country would be really cool. I'd love to go to Germany too, um, I just don't know if we can swing it financially, but yeah. Hope that answers that, it's a really long answer to that question. Drew's page says, you give it your engine spec and it suggests a needle. Okay, I'll try that out. Naveen says, I have a, a, a problem, let's see here, chat moved a little bit so give me just a second um 98 rover left side wheel i notice it on rough road same is darn it this freaking phone not working so well 
There we go. Sorry about that. Sorry about losing the live connection there. I'm just, uh, apparently I'm terrible with phones, even though I'm no computers. Um, now let's see here. I have a problem with my 98 Rover left side wheel. It makes a, uh, a noise on rough road, same as expressway. What can it be, ball joint or rack? Can you guess it? Um, Naveen, I would check, uh, well, what's the noise sound like? Is it like a grinding or is it like a clunk, 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 clunk kind of noise? Um, what I would do is jack the car up, take the wheel and give it a little tug like this and like this. If you've got movement um, in those two ways, uh, and it might be the wheel bearing. Um, you can also check the ball joints by taking the wheel off, disconnecting the ball joints, using a ball joint splitter um, like this. This pushes down, splits the ball joint and disconnects it and you can check to see what the play is like on those ball joints. Um, I check the wheel bearing first, just to rule that out while the wheel's on and it's jacked up. Then if that doesn't fix it, then you can check the ball joints. Um, the tie rod ends, you can check them after that by disconnecting them. You'll probably need the ball joint splitter for that as well. Um, and then, uh, I mean, it's, it's really like you can check everything all at the same time. Um, but the noise would help uh, help me diagnose it. Chris Raffel says, uh, on the subject of gearboxes, I have a stiff neutral. I was told this is the reverse gear bushing. Um, never taken the gearbox apart. Does this sound logical? Stiff neutral. So when you're saying stiff neutral, does that, are you saying that it's, uh, it's like when it's in the neutral gate, it feels tight? Is that right? Um, or is it that it's tough to get it into neutral? Um, oh, I see. You say yes. I'm assuming you're saying yes to uh, the stiff um, when it's in neutral. Hmm. What kind of gearbox is it? Is it a rod change gearbox or a remote gearbox? So uh, under the car, do you have a big housing like this that goes to your shifter? Okay, rod change. Hmm. Reverse gear bushing. I don't, it doesn't really make sense to me that the reverse gear bushing would be causing a tight neutral. Um, because when your car is in neutral and you're just kind of moving the, um, the gear up and down, the selector is just moving through the gates. It's not really, it's not really engaging or disengaging the reverse gear. Um, Hmm. It could be, it could be as simple as the bushings inside your rod change assembly where the gear lever goes down into that box. Those bushings could be worn. Um, that'd be actually a lot, it'd be a lot easier to check that than it would be to take the whole gearbox apart, obviously. Um, you can do that by disconnecting the rods from the, uh, from the gearbox taking that assembly down, um, taking the gear shift out the top and then taking that assembly down. And then you can kind of spin the selector shaft that goes into that box. Um, kind of feel how that feels when you rotate it. Um, because if it's, if those bushings are worn, it might feel tight there. Although if they're worn, it'd probably feel looser, but I'd check that first. Um, before you get into the gearbox and all that, it just doesn't really feel like a reverse gear to me. Naveen says it sounds like duck duck. Um, yeah, so I, actually I would still probably recommend you check those those three things. So first, jack the car up, feel the wheel top to bottom, kind of wiggle it like this, wiggle it like this without trying to with while trying to prevent the wheel from turning. So making sure your wheel doesn't turn. Um, if you have any play there, you know for sure that it is the wheel bearing there. Um, after you do that, take the wheel off. Check the tie rod first, I would, I would recommend. Popping that out, seeing if there's any sort of play there, seeing if it's like loose the joint at all. Um, after that, check the front diagonal tie rod. That's the rod that runs from the bottom arm all the way up to the front of the car and it has two bushings that mount to the subframe. Um, those like to kind of make a clunky noise when they're going bad. 
Um, and then finally you can check the ball joints by splitting those and giving them a wiggle and seeing if they're really loose. Um, if they are, then you'll know that the ball joints are bad. Chris Raffel says, someone suggested on older reverse gear that it has a solid bush. No idea. Older reverse gear, solid bush. Yeah, I don't, I'm not really, uh, mm, I mean, that doesn't really sound right to me. Whoops. Sorry about that, everyone. But now this is a remote box, but you can see this is your reverse gear right here. And it's not that much different um, with this box versus a new one. I mean, it is definitely different, but when you're in, re when you're in neutral, this isn't really moving side to side. Um, I just, I don't think that's what it is. Tony says, hey Cole, thanks for joining the stream. Uh, what's on Alex Toon's Mini? How does it drive compared to the older model minis? I was just curious to know, thanks for the uh, advisement on the lower arm bushings from 7 Mini Parts. Um, yeah, man, happy to help out there. Uh, so his Mini is an SPI automatic, um, so much newer. Uh, and I had never driven an automatic before. I will say that it wasn't, the automatic gearbox is definitely not my favorite, um, but it is pretty cool. Uh, the whole, so you know on newer automatic gearboxes how when you're switching from park to reverse to drive, it all kind of clicks into place into each gear. Um, a mini gearbox does not do that. Um, you can basically just kind of fling the gear uh, selector pretty much anywhere you want it to. Um, which is really strange, uh, it takes some getting used to, and you don't want to hit it while you're driving. Um, also, when driving it, it wants to shift really quickly. So uh, if you're looking for really raw power, you don't really get it as easily with an automatic um, because it tries to get you to fourth gear as quickly as possible. So instead of an, a manual where you're like, one, brrr, two, brrr, the, the automatic goes, doo, doo, all the way through those gears pretty quickly. But it does have all the gears kind of lined up so you can go sort of like a manual automatic from one to two to three to four. Um, but uh, it, it is pretty cool. Um, but I would not say that it's the most intuitive uh, feeling gearbox. The SPI was incredibly reliable for 99% of the, the trip. And we did have a small overheat um, while I was driving into IMM. Um, if you were there, you might have seen me getting pushed in by a few uh, few people, my dad and uh, some of the staff um, at IMM. We got pushed in, that was all good. We filled it up and then it ended up being okay the rest of the time. Um, but other than that, it was super reliable, really quiet and comfortable, um, which was uh, nice. It was very nice. Drew's, uh, Drew's page says, when testing for play, wheel bearing play will appear to go away when you press the brake. Yes, that's true. That's a, uh, it's, it's tough to do with a single person, but if you've got a second, if you've got a buddy or something, have them press the brake and uh, then try and wiggle the wheel. It won't wiggle anymore because the disc or the drums are going to be holding it in place. So it won't be able to move like this or like this. Um, oh, my dad's in the, in the live chat right now. He said it was great exercise pushing the SPI Mini. So thanks again, Dad. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, just had to, you know, get you to, to get that exercise in um, while we were vacationing. Uh, too many fish and chips. Let's see. Naveen says, got it. Thanks for your recommendations. You're welcome. Hope that, hope that helps solve it. So, what else you guys got for me? Probably gonna stick around for another maybe 10 to 15 minutes unless, uh, unless nobody has anything else. Uh, keep the live stream at about an hour. So, if you guys don't know, um, right now we are remodeling our kitchen and uh, it has been pretty crazy. Uh, the kitchen has been a mess and obviously all the stuff that's in the kitchen goes out. If you can believe it, the room that I'm in right now is actually one of the most uh, uh, 
organized rooms that I can be in at our house right now, even though there is a bunch of stuff all over the floor, all of my mini stuff. But um, if anyone tries to convince you that redoing your kitchen is easy or uh, not a stressful process, uh, look at them straight in the eye and tell them they're a liar. Well, if everybody is, uh, is feeling pretty good, I don't have any more questions, I might just go ahead and cap off the live stream. Um, I appreciate you guys joining in for this little live stream. Uh, I know it was not a super long one. Um, oh, Adrian says, Iceland sounds like a great plan for next year as well. You could also combine IMM Germany with a trip to Italy, France, or even the Black Forest area in Germany. That would be really cool. Um, uh, so at the end of this year, um, basically uh, from the end of December through the beginning of January, my wife, my parents, and I are all, we're all going to uh, south of Italy. We're going to Naples um, and Sorrento and staying down there for basically like right after Christmas and New Year's. Very excited about that. Um, that'll be kind of a family getaway, uh, which will be cool. And then next year, we'll do Iceland and Norway. Should be really neat. Um, but I've always wanted to go to the Black Forest in Germany. Um, we haven't really done Germany. We've done Austria. We've done, uh, um, Italy, England, um, but i to try other places. Uh, Tony says, did you get your battery issues sorted out on your mini bro? And how is the dash cam going? Um, but let me show you the dash cam one more time. Uh, I showed people a minute ago, um, but I don't know who was here and who wasn't. Um, battery has been replaced. That is good. And I also had to replace the alternator. Um, the alternator had gone bad. Um, but let's have a walk back out here to the mini. Um, my DJI says, what do you prefer for cones, springs, or, um, oh, sorry. What do you prefer cones or springs for the suspension? Um, I, I actually like both. I think that both are good. You can't really go wrong with either. Well, you can go wrong with springs if you don't install them properly. Um, I will say that. Um, Mark says, if you're nearby, drop into Switzerland. I've always wanted to go to Switzerland, so we'll definitely be there at some point. Um, I would be more than happy to take you around a few mountain passes in my Mark 1. Well, that sounds incredible. So, um, DB Mini DIY says, what about a trip to Scotland? Hey, man, I, I, my parents love Scotland. Uh, they say nothing but good things about it, so that's definitely on our list too. Um, so I showed this earlier. This is my dash cam. You can see that it is off. Had a cheap wire, um, one of the ones that was supposed to cut it off when the voltage got low. Didn't do that, um, so it drained my battery, um, and that's what kind of started presenting all of the electronics issues, uh, showing my alternator was bad and all this other stuff. But what I did is this is just a normal mini USB cable hardwired into the overhead light circuit, which as you can see, no overhead light. And this hole right here, well, it's not a hole anymore, it's a button, used to have my seatbelt in it. We moved to the seatbelt down here and I put this little capacitive touch button. So when you press this, the dash cam comes on and that is what is preventing my battery from draining but it's also a little secret button and it fills that hole. So it just looks nicer. And, uh, and look at that. You can see the dash cam's on. I'm going to press the button and the dash cam is now off when, uh, when the car is off on the other side, got another button It's not fully in there. I need to get that a little bit tighter in there, but this one I'm thinking I've got a good recommendation from this video actually was to switch this to a, uh, relay that turns on and off the fuel pump um, as a little extra safety. So um, when turning on the car, turn the key, press this button, push this button, car starts. That could be pretty cool. Adrian says, if you ever come to the Black Forest, we have awesome roads for the Mini. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have got my, my boss at work is actually from Germany. Um, and uh, he just says that it's such a beautiful country, so I've always wanted to visit. Oh, right. I think that's everything. It's not a lot new in the, in the inside of the car right now, I don't think. I did put these little chrome trim pieces back on here. 
Um, so now my car is much posher. And then all of the weather seal on these back windows just got replaced. I'm hoping that it's finally watertight. Won't know for sure until, well, until it rains. But the car's really coming together. I also changed the horn press button and put a new horn in. Oh. finally starting to cool down here in the U.S. too. Well, in North Carolina it is at least. Very happy about that because it gets hot. All right, ladies and gents. Well, if you guys don't have anything else, I think I'm going to wrap it up. Um, thanks so much for joining the, uh, the live stream. And letting me complain about my gearbox a little bit. And I hope uh, some of the questions that I answered will help you guys get your minis back running. Um, but i got to wait for more parts for this thing. So it's probably going to be a little bit before I finish the engine still. Um, super frustrated about that. But lucky for you and unlucky for me, I have to replace the steering rack on my mini. Um, so I'm going to be doing a comprehensive video on how to replace that steering rack with the engine and the subframe in the car. Um, God, I really don't want to do that, but uh, it's it's something that is going to have to be done. So uh, I know that that's been a request from you guys for a long time. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it will exceed your expectations uh, because it's going to be quite a process. But that's it for me today. And uh, until the next episode, until the next video, enjoy those minis and motor on.